We're gonna make baguettes today. The recipe I'm using comes straight out of the book, How to Make Bread by Emmanuel Haji Andrea, one of the many great recipes in his book. The instructions are pretty straightforward. It starts with mixing up a pre-ferment called a poolish the night before, and then continuing in the morning. Making a poolish couldn't be simpler. In this case, we're adding a gram of instant yeast to 125 grams of all-purpose flour. And then mixing that into 125 grams of warm water. You'll find all the ingredients and measurements on our website, so you don't have to make note of them now. And this will sit covered overnight. This is the poolish that I prepared last night. It's bubbly, has a wonderful yeasty aroma, and it's ready to go. Let me see if I can get a close-up for you. To the poolish, we add 140 grams of warm water. Then the dry ingredients, which consists of 300 grams of all-purpose flour, five grams of salt, and a gram of instant yeast. And we're gonna mix this just until the flour is incorporated. Until all the ingredients come together. Now we have kind of a rough ball of dough, but we're just gonna let that sit in the bowl for 10 minutes covered, and then come back in 10 minutes. And I'll show you what we do next. Now you're gonna do a series of brief kneadings that are more like stretch and folds. Each one should only take about 10 seconds. The instructions call for this to be done a total of four times in 10 minute intervals, uh, by the end of which you'll have a nice smooth ball of dough and you'll cover it between each kneading. If you wet your fingers a little bit, the dough won't stick when you're kneading. This is the fourth time doing this and the dough is indeed nice and smooth now. Now we're just gonna let it sit here and proof covered for one hour. All right, it's been an hour. We're gonna punch down the dough. And weigh it. Weighs 689 grams divided by three. So we want each piece to be uh, 230 grams. So we're gonna divide this into three even pieces. That's 230. 
that's 230. So this should be 230, 228, close enough. All right. Now we need to flower the board a little bit. And we're gonna flatten these out gently into an oval, kind of an oval shape and stretch the ends and fold towards the middle. And then you're going to take the top edge of this piece and fold it towards the, the middle, about one third, flip it 180, turn it 180 and do the same thing on the other side. Fold the top edge towards the middle, turn it 180, do the same thing on the other edge. Now hopefully you have three uniform oblong loaves that you're going to let rest seam side down for 15 minutes. These two look pretty good. This one's not quite the same shape, but now it is sort of. And I'm going to cover that with a damp towel so they don't dry out while they're resting. Okay, 15 minutes rest time. And after the 15 minute rest period, we're gonna take one of the loaves, turn it over, flatten slightly, and starting at one corner, fold one third of the way towards the middle and move to the other end and do the same thing. And then going back to the other side, fold the other, the last portion over so it's all rolled up. And then just roll it out like this to form your desired, to get, till you get the desired length. It can be a little tricky getting just the right uniformity you're after. That's pretty close. Flatten slightly, starting at one corner, fold one third of the way over, go to the end at their end, one third, then finish folding it over and roll it out. Now you're going to place them on your floured couche or baking linen.
cover and let them rise until they're about double in size. It's about one hour. Now the fun part, scoring and baking. A couple of ways you can do this is to transfer the loaves to a baguette pan like this. Score the loaves and go straight into your preheated oven. Or if you're using a baking stone, you can transfer them onto a parchment paper lined cookie sheet, which slides easily onto the stone. And that's what I'm gonna do. Now I'll use this baguette flipping board to transfer the dough onto the cookie sheet. For scoring, use a lom or a super sharp blade. Scoring can be a bit tricky. You want about five one quarter inch deep cuts down the middle overlapping by one third and the blade held at about a 45 degree angle. And you need to move kind of fast so you get a clean cut and don't tear the dough. I think you need to do this several hundred times to get the feel for it. It's awesome to watch a real pro do it. Most of the time I don't get it right and when I do, it's pure luck. and into the 475 degree oven for about 15 minutes or until golden brown. Then I'll pour about a half a cup of water into a hot pan to produce some steam. All right, it's been about 17 minutes. Definitely look like they're done. And they sound like they're done. They're done. Now we'll let them cool for about an hour. Let's see if we can pick up some of that wonderful crackling noise that bread makes while it's cooling. All right, let's take a look at the inside. Well, these look pretty good. The crumb, which is the inside part of the bread on a baguette, is supposed to be characterized by lots of random sized holes with none of them too big. This particular loaf could have more of the larger holes. For that, I could experiment with increasing the hydration level of the dough somewhat next time. Tweaking things like hydration levels, proofing times, and dough handling can make striving for baguette perfection something of, a, of an obsession. I probably made this recipe about six to eight times, and these loaves are pretty typical of the results I get. Sometimes they look a little better, sometimes they're not so great, but everyone has delivered an excellent baguette eating experience with a crispy, crackly crust and a soft, creamy crumb. So if you like baguettes, give these a try. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. One last note, baguettes are best enjoyed within a few hours of baking. So plan your baking schedule with that in mind. Have fun with it and please share your results.